Okay, let's talk about everyone's favorite topic, and of course that is fractions. And what we want to do here is subtract these two fractions that have variables in them. So what do we do? That is going to be obviously the question that we're going to answer in this particular video. Now, if you know how to do this particular problem, go ahead and pause the video, put your answer into the comment section. Of course, I'm going to answer this, solve this. I'm actually going to do this in two different ways. I'll talk more about that in a moment. But uh, in algebra, when you have a fraction that has a variable in it, we uh, basically like to technically refer to these things typically as rational expressions. There's even a more specific definition in, uh, in uh, with respect to rational expressions. But basically, what you need to know is, that, hey, we got some fractions, they have some variables uh, in the numerator and denominator, what do we do? Now, before we get going here, it's going to be a good idea that you know how to just work with a basic arithmetic, right? So what do we do in this situation? Two thirds minus one seventh, no variable. So if you're a little bit rusty on basic arithmetic, adding and subtracting fractions, I'm gonna suggest that you check out some of my fraction videos on my YouTube channel uh, in my pre-algebra playlist. I actually um, have a good many of um, fraction videos on how to find the LCD, add, subtract fractions. Literally my videos with my um, all my fraction videos have millions of views. So there's a lot of people out there that need help with fractions. So don't be shy about reviewing basic arithmetic uh, when it comes to fractions before you get into this, because you're going to have to understand arithmetic before you can handle this type of problem. But we're going to get into uh, this um, type of problem here in just one moment. But let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm gonna leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But if you're struggling with math, I'm here to tell you it doesn't have to be that way. I've been teaching math for decades and really what I like to believe is that I've kind of developed a style of not really teaching, more explaining, okay? Because I think people need explanations. They don't need to be taught down to. And uh, sometimes when you're reading a textbook or if you're being taught like a textbook, it, it's just not making sense. So what I like to do is explain things in super clear and understandable way ways so anyone and everyone can uh, learn this stuff. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, definitely check out my math help program if you are taking a math course and need help. Now, if you are preparing for any kind of test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplace, or CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, we were just voted number one for middle and high school mathematics by a major uh, national homeschool publication. Super excited about that, so definitely check out our homeschool math courses. And if you need some math notes, I'm gonna leave links to my math notes in the description of this video as well. But if you want to do well in mathematics, you have to learn how to take outstanding notes. Okay, so let's get into this problem. And of course, um, I'm assuming that you know how to uh, uh, work with a problem like this, two thirds minus one seventh. Actually, here, let me just write this out real quick. Let's talk about this real fast. Can I, can I subtract these two fractions right now? Okay, so the answer is either yes or no. And the answer here is no, okay? I cannot subtract these fractions the way they are right now. Now, why isn't that, okay? Or, or why is that the case? Why can't I subtract these two fractions? Because the denominators are not the same, okay? So this is where a lot of students just kind of like have this look and are like fractions. They're like, oh no, I don't want to deal with fractions because then you got to start thinking about the LCD, and I gotta like do all this extra work. So yes, when anytime you're adding and subtracting fractions, we need to kind of verify uh, or look to see are the denominators the same. If they're not, then we're gonna have to uh, change each of these respective fractions such that they have the same common denominator, often referred to as the lowest common denominator. So that's kind of what we're talking about here. But I'm gonna um, talk about a shortcut that I've mentioned a lot on my videos. I call it the bow tie method. We'll talk about this here in a second. But here's our problem, okay? So there's two ways we can approach this. But uh, first of all, let's just take a look at the denominators, okay? Are these the same denominators? The answer is no, okay? So we cannot just subtract these uh, respective fractions in its current form. So we're gonna have to fix these up such that they have the same denominator. So if we uh, take that path, we're gonna have to figure out what the LCD is and rewrite each of these respective fractions such that they do um, have the LCD as their denominator. So that's the first thing that we're gonna do. 
I'm actually going to do this problem here in a second. I'm curious, what is the LCD? Okay, what's the LCD between these two uh, fractions? And if you don't know how to find the LCD, again, I have uh, additional videos on this in my pre-algebra and algebra one playlist, because when we're dealing with algebra and finding the LCD, it can get a little bit more beyond than finding the LCD with just numbers. Okay, so make sure you follow through with that video. Or if you really want to learn all this stuff, I would suggest like my algebra one course. Okay, so we're going to um, do this problem first by finding the LCD, and then obviously we'll get the answer. And then there is another path you can take, and I'm calling that the shortcut uh, method, but really it's called, what I call it, is the bow tie method, okay? You definitely want to put this into your math tools, put this in like in a super special place like break in case of an emergency, because this is one of the most important little uh hacks, techniques, shortcuts that you want to know in mathematics. So we'll talk about this second, but let's get into it now. And here is our problem. So we're looking at the uh, denominators. We're like, okay, the denominators are the same, so I'm going to have to find the lowest common denominator. And the LCD, the lowest common denominator, is the respective, it's this factor and this factor, so it's x times x minus 1. Now, if you don't know why this is the case, okay, and I'm not fully explaining it in this video, this right here is a lesson in and of itself, okay, when it comes to algebra. So again, check out my algebra playlist or one of my algebra courses where I teach this stuff very thoroughly, okay? But the bottom line is that the LCD is x times x minus 1, okay? Now, I'm, trying to, not, I'm not trying to blow through this real fast, uh, because we would really have to do a lot of problems in order to uh, kind of really get this down or fully explain it. I will say this much, you're, you're going to need to know how to factor, uh, and you're going to also need to know how to be very comfortable finding the LCD with numeric fractions, okay? But if you knew that the LCD is X times X minus 1, that's excellent, okay? So, but uh, what does that mean? Well, in order to subtract these fractions, each one of these denominators needs to have X times x minus 1 as its uh, uh, respective denominators, so we're going to have to fix this up now. Okay, so let's take a look at our first fraction, 4y over x minus 1. In order for us to rewrite that with the LCD, x times x minus 1, I have an x minus 1 down here, so how can I make this look like x times x minus 1? Well, how about we just multiply the denominator by x, so I got x times x minus 1, but if I multiply the denominator by x, I got to multiply the numerator by x. Okay, so that's what's going on here. And then here in our second fraction, 3x, to have x times x minus 1 uh, as a denominator, I need to multiply this x times x minus 1. Okay, so now here you can see both of these denominators are going to end up with having x times x minus 1 um, as the respective denominators. But as in the other fraction, uh, because I multiplied the, denu uh, the denominator, excuse me, by x uh, minus 1, I got to multiply the numerator by x minus 1. So this is basically following the patterns of just basic arithmetic, okay? So it's just doing this exact same thing. That's why you have to really understand arithmetic, just working with numbers. Uh, we're not doing anything different. We're just using the same procedures. We're just, uh, um, you know, we have variables instead of numbers. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually do this uh, work. So x times uh, x times 4y is 4xy. x times x minus 1, we could just have as x times x minus 1. Then 3 times x minus 1, I could just write it this way. And then we have that over x times x minus 1. Now we have common denominators. So what do we do there? Well, we just write one denominator, and then we simply go ahead and subtract the numerator. So that'll be 4x minus, now here, I can distribute uh, this uh, 3 right here. So that could be 3x, and then 3 times this negative 3 is going to be a positive 3. So I could write it this way. So this is one um, answer, or you can just leave it in this form, uh, 4x minus y minus 3 times x minus 1, just like this. If uh, you turn this in to me and I was your teacher on some sort of quiz or test, I would give you full credit for this work right there. Okay, so this is... Uh, these two answers right here are equivalent. Okay, so how did you do? Were you able to get this right? And uh, if you didn't use this path, but you got this as one of your answers, then excellent. Let me give you a little happy face and a few check marks because that's outstanding, okay? Now, if you're a little bit confused on this, if you're like, well, okay, I get this, but show me the shortcut. Well, I'm gonna show you the shortcut now, but uh, you need to um, know that 
even if you like this shortcut method, and you're, I think you're going to love uh, this uh, technique I'm going to show you here, you still need to know how to work, uh, find the LCD and work with the LCD. So you're going to have to know this procedure I just showed you right here. Okay, But let's talk about this second um, uh, method. And I call it the shortcut method, but really I call it the bow tie method. Again, if you've watched some of my other fraction videos, this is one of my favorite things in math. Now, a bow tie, okay, here's a little stick figure. What is a bow tie? A bow tie is these little things that nobody wears. Maybe a few uh, cool people wear these little bow ties, right? It looks like this, all right? And we want to keep this uh, shape in mind because this is <clears throat> going to be kind of like the pattern that we're going to use to subtract. So let's start off with this easy example, and then we'll do this problem, okay? All right, so the bow tie method is you, you, it goes in this specific order, okay? We're going to start from the bottom right, and we're going to multiply this way, okay? So that's going to be 5 times 1. We're going to write that answer. Of course, that's 5. Now, this is a, a subtraction problem, so I'm going to write subtraction, okay, or subtraction operator or difference operator. And then I'm going to start from the bottom left. I'm going to multiply this way, 3 times x, okay? So that's going to be 3x. So this forms my numerator, and of course, it looks like a little crisscross, like you know, kind of like a bow tie, if you will. So 5 times 1 is 5. This is subtraction. 3 times x is 3x. Uh, this is subtraction, uh, so we're going to write a subtraction operator right there. That is my numerator, and you're going to put that, you're going to put a little fraction bar, and it's over 3 times 5, which is what? 15. Okay, you are done. This problem is finished, and uh, that's how we use the bow tie method. Okay, super cool method, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, use this method now. Okay, so we're going to start right here. Here's our problem. So it's going to be x times 4y. So what's x times 4y? It's 4yx. Okay, now we're going to go this way, x minus 1 times 3. Now, anytime in algebra you have a sum or difference, just put some parentheses around that so you don't get confused. So x minus 1 times 3, we can write as 3 times x minus 1. Again, this is a, a subtraction problem, so we're going to have that difference operator uh, between this. And this is our numerator. Okay, so again, x times 4y, 4yx, and then x minus 1 times 3. 3 times x minus 1, we have our subtraction operator, that's our numerator, and then all we're going to do to get our denominator is x minus 1 times x, which of course is x times x minus 1, we already knew, that was our LCD, and this is it, okay, this is the answer. So some of you might be astounded, you're like, oh my goodness, that's all I had to do, I just had to go like this, and then like this, and like this, well, yes, okay, if you did that, I would be uh, quite uh, satisfied with this answer, and I would have to uh, definitely be like, wow, that was so impressive. You know the bow tie method. I have to give you a little um, 1981 Mohawk, an A plus and 100% outstanding. Okay, so you got to know this bow tie method. You got to know this shortcut. It's absolutely critical uh, to know this. But again, this doesn't exonerate you from understanding how to find the LCD and how to work with the LCD as well. You're going to have to know all this stuff. But oftentimes, a lot of students will just stick with the LCD technique and do a lot of extra work because if you're on a uh, quiz or test or it's multiple choice and you can just get the right answer very quickly well then yes you know use shortcuts it will save you time and you'll get the right answer every single time so anyways hopefully uh, there will be no more expressions like this when it comes to subtracting fractions and if uh, you know you're struggling with this well that's quite normal make sure you go back and uh, strengthen your arithmetic first OK, and then, you know, start doing easier problems, etc. So this particular problem, if it's a little bit too much for you, don't panic. Just go back and, you know, uh, start reviewing fractions. Make sure you have this stuff down again and then build from there. But uh, if this particular video helped you out, consider helping me out by smashing that like button and subscribing to my YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic math, like arithmetic, all the way to advanced math, like calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, I have a ton of uh, stuff um, on my channel that can help you out. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.